All right. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for attending the press conference. This is going to be an update on the, uh, the officer that was shot here on November 16th uh, in Waterbury. Uh, I have with me uh, Lieutenant Colonel Kane from uh, the State Police, uh, Acting Major Duva, uh, Chief McAllister from Naugatuck, uh, Chief Stevens from uh, Wilkett, and uh, the new Major Crimes uh, Supervisor. He'll introduce himself to you. Uh, Washington Major Crimes, uh, Lieutenant all right, thank you. So as you're aware, on November 16th at about 10.15 p.m., uh, the Waterbury Police Department, uh, in a collaboration uh, with the Connecticut State Police and other police departments from the region running a uh, violent crime task force, were conducting an undercover operation here in the city, uh, conducting surveillance, uh, looking for a, uh, uh, a known felon uh, with a shooting warrant. Um, at some point during that surveillance, uh, the officers uh, recognized that the counter surveillance was being conducted on them. They left the area. Uh, as they left an area, uh, a black Audi uh, pursued the officers in their undercover car and at some point fired rounds at the undercover car. There was a Naugatuck police officer and a Wilkett police officer in that car at the time that those shots were fired. Uh, they're part of the violent crime task force that operates here in the city uh, in collaboration with the state police. Uh, after the shots were fired, um, the Naugatuck police officer who was driving the car uh, recognized and realized he was shot. Uh, he was rendered aid by officers at the scene. Uh, EMS responded. He was transported to Waterbury Hospital. Uh, thankfully, uh, the wound was not that bad. He was released uh, later on that uh, evening, uh, and he's recovering quite well now. Um, an investigation ensued, you know, as you can imagine, after that, um, in collaborative efforts with the state police, the Naugatuck police, the Wilkett Police Department, and some of our federal partners. Uh, through investigative means and some forensics information that we were able to obtain, we were able to identify uh, a witness, or, or I'm sorry, a suspect to, uh, to this incident. Uh, his name is Jason Perez. Uh, we were able to work with the state's attorney's office and um, make an arrest of Perez uh, in, in connection with this particular incident. Perez is now charged with assault first degree, conspiracy to commit assault first degree, weapons in a motor vehicle. He'll be arraigned in Waterbury Court uh, a little later on today, we assume around the noon hour. He's currently being held on a half a million dollar bond. Perez is a convicted felon. He's a repeat offender. He's known to the Waterbury Police Department uh, and throughout the state to some other urban police departments. Uh, as you can see from this list, he's got a, a, a slew of charges um, that uh, stem around narcotics and uh, violence dating back to 2002. Uh, this is still a very active and ongoing investigation. There's search warrants that are being served uh, in areas of the city right now. Um, there's a forensic examination that's being conducted on some vehicles right now, uh, and we do anticipate more arrests to follow uh, as this investigation continues. So at this point, I'd like to turn it over to uh, Chief McAllister for a few words from the Naugatuck Police Department. Thanks, Chief. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say that this incident actually strengthens our resolve to continue our commitment with our collaborative efforts with our state, federal, um, and local partners here in Waterbury. This highlights the need to remove uh, this small but highly uh, dangerous and violent group of offenders from the streets of our community as we can see the danger that they pose. Um, I'd also like to thank EMS uh, for transporting and treating our officer immediately after the incident. Uh, that was AMR Waterbury, as well as Waterbury Hospital for ensuring the prompt, uh, very professional treatment of our officer in the aftermath of this incident. Um, I'd like to recognize the City of Waterbury Police Department, who has been working nonstop and around the clock um, with their detective division, as well as some of our detectives, to uh, bring this incident to a resolution and make an arrest. Um, and uh, lastly, the officer, um, I'd like to uh, thank him for his efforts out here. He is making a recovery. Um, in this incident, it, it definitely highlights the dangers that our officers face out there. Um, it reminds us uh, what they're up there against, but the fact that they're eager to come back to work and want to continue despite these dangers it speaks to their character, it speaks to their integrity, it speaks to their strengths. Um, it just increases, again, their commitment and resolve to get out there and continue to try to make our streets safer. So, thank you. All right, and you know, listen, um, without the support of uh, Commissioner Ravala, the, uh, the, the DSEP commissioner and, and the state police, uh, you know, operations like this 
uh, don't exist. You know, this funding came from the governor's office for these violent crime task force that are set up uh, in each of the urban areas throughout the state. Uh, and it's uh, a really unique and uh, uh, strong initiative and approach uh, towards violence that's occurring uh, throughout the state of Connecticut. So we're grateful for the support uh, and um, we, we hope that continues. Uh, as Chief McAllister highlighted, you know, this really highlights the danger um, that our officers face each and every day on the streets. Um, you know, as you all should be aware of and the, and the public should be aware of, in the last two months there's been five police officers shot in the state of Connecticut. I've been a police officer 30 years in the state of Connecticut. This is unheard of to me. I never remember uh, th this type of violence occurring against police officers uh, at any time during my career. On October 7th, we had a New Haven police officer that was shot and injured. Uh, on October 23rd, we had uh, three Bristol police officers that were shot, two uh, uh, were murdered, and, and uh, one uh, is recovering from that. And now we have uh, this incident here. So it's very concerning uh, to us as police administrators. Uh, we're grateful that we're continuing to work in a collaborative effort and able to support each other. Uh, and we'll, you know, continue to do the best we can uh, to keep our communities safe and even as important and more importantly, our officers who are serving those communities safe. Uh, there's some uh, highlights here from, uh, from the Fraternal Order of Police on statistics of uh, officers uh, that have been shot. Um, Lieutenant Pasek can provide this information to you. Uh, it dates back to 2019 and we can see how uh, it's just, uh, it's been a very deadly, deadly year. Uh, and we're seeing how incidents of, of gun violence are rising against police. Are you able to shed light on what this undercover surveillance operation was? Yeah, we were, uh, the, the Violent Crime Task Force was attempting to serve an arrest warrant, an active arrest warrant um, on a shooter, on, on a person that uh, had a million dollar bond for a, con uh, a criminal attempt at assault first degree, involved in a shooting in the town of Wilkett about two weeks prior to this date. It's a different person. And um, did that person, was that person involved in shooting or anything like that? Uh, that's, we're unaware of that at this point in time, but uh, everything's still open to investigation. So it's your concern that they knew that this was an undercover car? Uh, listen, this is still a very active investigation, and we're going to travel down all the roads and, and you know, run out all the, the ground balls here. Um, I don't have that answer for you right now. Well, these officers recognized that they were being surveilled by that black Audi and at some point determined it would be better to leave the area. What area were they in the city? It was in the Brooklyn section of the city. And they were down all the way to the parkway and then that's where the shooting happened? Shooting occurred as the officers turned their car onto the uh, I-84 eastbound entrance ramp by Chase Parkway Memorial Funeral Home. Uh, currently, we don't have video of the shooting as it occurred. So just to reiterate, so these officers are under surveillance, they're about to serve an arrest warrant. They notice this Audi is kind of like following them, watching them. They decide to just leave the area as best as they can leave the area. Does the Audi follow them at this point? It does. Okay. And then Perez fires at the um, officers. Was there another person in the car? So Perez is charged with assault first degree and conspiracy to commit assault first degree. This is an active investigation. We do anticipate more arrests. Was there a passenger in the car, not the driver? Again. You're not sure? Would Perez, has he been known to the task force specifically or just generally known by the department <coughs> as, as a DCFI agent? Uh, he he's, has a long history here uh, with the Waterbury Police Department. He's got history in other uh, uh, city uh, police departments throughout the state of Connecticut. Um, he was not the intended target of the surveillance that night. Did you recover a firearm? At this time, no. Any indication, like, what kind of weapon it might have been? Was it small? Uh, you know, our ballistic experts are working with the state lab on that right now. I don't have an answer for you. Was there another officer that was in the car with the, officer, the non police officer that was killed? Yes, there was a... a Violent Crime Task Force officer from the town of Wilkett uh, that was a passenger in the car at that time. Were the police officers in, I, you said they were undercover, but were they, were they wearing vests? Did they have anything with them that indicated they were police, like, you know, maybe jackets or anything like that? 
absolutely. They, they, they had their credentials. They were wearing bulletproof vests. And, um, you know, the, the frightening part about this particular incident is, is that bullet found its way, you know, from the back panel to where the shoulder strap was, where, you know, the very little bit of uh, unprotected body is exposed and, you know, launched itself there. Where, where exactly was this stuff? Uh, right shoulder, chest area. And were, did they shoot through the window? How did it hit him? Uh, so we're, we're conducting a lot of forensic analysis on the car. Um, our ballistics expert has done some tracking of the bullets. Um, there's certainly one bullet that went through the hatchback um, that ended up lodging into the front of the car, into the dashboard of the car. Um, we believe potentially that may be the, the bullet that caused the damage to the officer. Just want to clarify, you said you struck in the shoulder Uh, listen, it was a gunshot wound. You know, it, in my opinion, I'm not a medical expert. You know, from what I saw, it wasn't a graze. It was a flesh wound. It was a gunshot wound, and we're very grateful that it didn't do more damage than what it did. Is it gang-related at all? I'm sorry? Is it gang-related at all? Uh, listen, you know, uh, anything and everything uh, that occurs when it, when it uh, surrounds violence like this, we, we uh, analyze and talk to our uh, DOC partners, our federal partners about group and gang affiliation is something that we really look at. Um, currently, we don't have um, that identified for Perez, but that's not to say that it may change as this investigation proceeds. Was the vehicle the officers were in, was it a little bit bullet? Which vehicle? The vehicle the officers were in, was it a little bit bullet holes? Uh, there were multiple shots fired. Uh, you know, we, we're really uh, concentrating on this one particular um, area where the car was shot right now. I, I don't have the answer for you on how many times uh, the car was struck. We can get that for you, though. So they could all destroy the evidence? Yeah. Yeah, listen, these officers, we've all had an opportunity to speak to them. Um, you know, they're, they're extremely resilient. Um, they're, they're, they're courageous, um, you know, and, and, and ready to come back to work. Uh, and, you know, I can't thank enough all the officers in the Violent Crime Task Force, which uh, encompasses Wilkett, Naugatuck, Watertown, uh, all the way down to Shelton, you know, our state police partners uh, who stayed here, you know, literally the last two days and gave up time with their family and their children, uh, you know, to work this case and bring all this to fruition so we were able to, to make an arrest and get a violent offender off the street. So Where I'm really grateful for that. I'm sorry. Um, I, you know, I don't have that answer for you right now. He was, uh, he was, he was uh, brought in. He, he may have come in on his own reconnaissance. Oh, where, where's my, yeah, he, he, he came to headquarters on his own. Did the water break yesterday? Yeah. Okay. Yesterday? Mm -hmm. Yes. Did you get your evening, afternoon? Yes, evening. Okay. And can you give an update on how the Nagatuck officer is doing? He, he, listen, he's doing great. I mean, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's resting uh, with his family. Um, he's, he's eager to get back to uh, full duty as soon as possible. Um, but again, this officer uh, has not at all been uh, you know, discouraged from what's happened. He's just uh, increased his commitment. He wants to get back out there with the task force. He's very focused on what the objective is here, which is removing these violent offenders from our community. But um, he, again, he's expected to make a full recovery. And we're very thankful for the outpouring of support we received from the community. Um, and, uh, and again, highlights the support that law enforcement has received as a result of these incidents. And can you kind of shed light a little bit on, obviously, this, he wasn't even the person that you were going to arrest. I mean, how, can you kind of talk about that, how we were able to narrow in on him? I mean, this is, a, in theory, kind of a generic car that could have come, been driven by anyone. How are you able to focus? Uh, listen, it's an incredible amount of uh, investigative uh, work that's done by our, uh, our detectives and uh, in this particular case, all the members of Violent Crime Task Force uh, using resources that are available forensically, uh, using uh, um, databases that are available uh, for us and those, uh, those investigators to research. And of course, our relationships in the community um, are always extremely beneficial uh, when we're conducting these investigations. Uh, n not, no, he was arrested on, on, on site because of the, the felony charges. Um, I'm sure that will be available after the arraignment or at the arraignment. Was the arrest warrant for other persons or intended for someone you served? No, not at this time. 
Yeah. We're working on it though. Okay. Oh, yeah. Is the Audi a stolen car? It is not a stolen car. There's um, a lot of forensic uh, examination that's being conducted on that particular car right now, um, but as far as we know at the moment, it is not a stolen car. Are you concerned that the officers Can you repeat that? Uh, is there any concern that the officers cover has been made uh, if they were operating on cover? Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly. I mean, that, that's a concern. Uh, that That's something that we'll continue to, to flesh out as, as we, you know, uh, continue this investigation. Um, you know, there's there's a number of reasons that uh, this could have occurred. That's certainly one of them. Um, but we'll, we'll hammer that out. Are things going to change at all? So each and every time an officer gets hurt or, or we conduct a, a major operation, uh, we take a look at it collectively, right? We take a look at the policies that govern the way we operate in those particular situations. Uh, we take a look at the equipment that we provide our officers. Uh, we take a look at the tactics that they use. Uh, and we, we mirror them or we, we compare them to best practices in other areas uh, of the country and even in the world. Uh, and we, we make sure that uh, we continuously update our policies, update our tactics, provide our officers training. So in this particular situation, the answer to your question is yes, we, we will take a look at uh, the way we operate to make sure that our officers are operating in, in the safest, number one, uh, way possible, but also the most effective and efficient way. And your officers did the right thing, or, you know, collectively. The officers did the right thing. So the Violent Crime Task Force is a, is a large task force. They weren't the only officers that, that were out in the area. And, and, and again, this just highlights, you know, the split-second decisions that police officers have to make uh, each and every day. You know, uh, sometimes we focus on those decisions only being, um, you know, uh, regarding force when they need to use force. But it really, it's split-second decisions they need to make to protect themselves and the community as well. So um, it just highlights that. What kind of role were the officers in an old Crown Vic related unit or? No. It wasn't. Just any car on the street? It, it wasn't a Crown Vic. That's all you're going to get, Bruno. <laughs> I know the uh, investigation is still going on, but do you think with his crime history, this is the first time he has fired a bomb officer? Uh, you know, listen, it, it's the first time he's getting arrested for it. Um, you know, and that, that's the situation that we deal with when we're dealing with these repeat violent offenders. Um, this is what we know about them, right? Uh, they don't necessarily think that uh, they may not be involved in, in other acts of violence that just haven't uh, come to fruition yet. Anything else? Okay, so thank you very much for this. We appreciate uh, all the support that you give us. Lieutenant Passat has some information. I, I don't think he's going to provide it now, but we have some information on a, on a parole uh, operation that we conducted on the same day. I don't want to talk about it because it's super important, I think, to get the message out regarding this particular arrest and, and the condition of the officer, but he'll make sure to provide that to you all uh, after this particular press conference, all right? All right, thank you.